Good evening, and for those who just join us, welcome to Artec Seminar at Assembly Summer 2018. Our next speaker uh, is going to present the beauty of the game jams. How many of you actually attended the game jam? All right, great audience. So. Now, I wish to welcome Anna Kaiser Kultima from Finnish Game Jam to the stage. Welcome. Thank you, Natasha. So, yeah, my name is Anna Kaiser Kultima, and I'm the head of the Finnish Game Jam organization. I'm here to talk about a little bit of experimental game jams. Um, and also, at the end of the presentation, I'll be revealing the theme for the jam that is running here for the whole weekend. So yeah, I call myself Jamtivist because I'm a huge proponent of game jams. I've been uh, running game jams since 2010 and also participating in them and I really enjoy making games in game jams but also feel the importance of running them and the enjoyment of running them. So I'm a jammer and also organizer, uh, chairperson for the organization that was established in 2013 to specifically run more game jams and also kind of uh, promote game making hobby in Finland. I'm also, or more, like, more kind of day job is uh, being a game researcher. I've been doing that since 2005 and game jams kind of entered my life through, through research. Um, so that was a great excuse to enter the field. So a Finnish Game Jam is an organization that is open for anybody that is interested in game jams, whether you're an organizer or you are organizer wannabe or you are a jammer or you are a jammer wannabe. So just uh, come to our um, table at the assembly um, to ask more questions if you're interested after the presentation. Game jams in Finland, uh, when we started in 2010, uh, there was only that one game jam. It was global game jam. And we've been growing uh, numbers of participants and also games created and locations that you could participate in uh, throughout the years exponentially. Um, so 2010, we only had three different sites um, that you could participate uh, to the global game jam in Finland. We had around 100 participants. And this year, in 2018, we already had almost 1,000 participants in 26 different locations around Finland. And um, don't remember the number of the games, but there were quite many games made in one weekend. Uh, these statistics are only for Global Game Jam, which was uh, the only jam when we started. But nowadays, there are so many other jams. And only just our organization runs about 10 jams in 2018. So already this year, we've been doing Global Game Jam again. Then we've done Sami Game Jam with indigenous people in the north. We've done Edu Game Jam at um, uh, what is Education Technology Conference ITECO. Then we've had seven-hour Game Jam at Suomi Arena with uh, some politicians as well. Then there is the Assembly Game Jam, which is happening here this weekend. Uh, we're going to have Pocket uh, Jam, which is happening during the Pocket Gamer Connects conference in September. Then there's going to be Game Jam in a, in a game museum, uh, Quantum Game Jam later this year, and also a Game Jam with Pikku Kakkonen. If you are a Finnish person, you know what that is about. So. But anyway, so it's been growing really a lot. And I would like to explain a little bit what is behind this whole phenomenon of making games and participating to the events where you make games. I'm a researcher, so I've also written about um, game jams in academic papers. And this is my kind of synthesis um, definition of what game jam is. It is based on research papers and also some of my own observations and interestingly, um, 
almost all of these things that are on this snippet. Game Jam is an accelerated game development event where you create a game in small teams with, within a relatively short time and publish the game right after the event. So almost all the sources that we went through didn't actually emphasize the public nature of this event. So what is typical in a Game Jam setting is that you create a game in a short time and then you also show it at the end of the uh, event. So usually we provide games online for anybody to download, but it can be also that you present the games to other jammers. So that is a super important part of the whole thing. And you're able to also see this work being done uh, at assembly and also the games um, that are being created are available for play for twice during this weekend. Quite recently, I've been starting to say that game jamming is actually improvisation of game development. And that is due to the fact that not all of the people know too much about game development or game jams, uh, but the word improvisation is something that they know about. So game jam is uh, it's an event where you create things from scratch. And similar to improvisation exercises, you might have a keyword which we usually called, um, for instance, theme, which is also revealed uh, on, on this presentation for the jam that we are running. So it is it really, it is improvisation. You don't have anything yet done, so you basically just improvise as you go. But to be honest, as a scholar studying game development, um, a lot of game development is also about improvisation. If you're running into a problem, you actually have to solve it by coming up with ideas on the go. So a lot of the game uh, development is also improvisation. Um, and um, so what is actually the difference between uh, that and uh, game jams? So eventually, the most true definition for game jam is that game jam is jamming. So if you've ever done jam in a band, for instance, that you get together and you play music, so kind of maybe somebody's um, singing a song and somebody is kind of riffing or somebody's doing the, the drumming, you play together and by that improvisation you create a song together by jamming. And this is exactly what happens in a game jam uh, at best. So. You go together, one person might do the art, some uh, design, programming, uh, music, voice acting, sound design, and all of that kind of complements each other and have to play together. So Game Jam is about jamming. If you have a certain kind of your uh, personal definition for what Game Jam is, there's probably a variation for that. So 2010, when we entered to the Global Game Jam in Finland, um, there was very few of the jams. But now you can search online game jams, and there's all sorts of events happening in different ways. So Global Game Jam is uh, typically 48 hours. It's happening during the weekend. Um, and you create games in a physical space together with others. Uh, Global Game Jam started in 2009, but even older uh, kind of tradition comes from Ludum, uh, Ludum Dare, which is actually pronounced Dare, not Dare. Um, so Ludum Dare is um, historically a, a competition for game development, but they also kind of call it Game Jam these days. And it's happening in online. So there's also a lot of game jams that you can join from the safety of your own home. And Ludum Dara is one of the biggest and oldest ones. And it's run about four times a year. Uh, Global Game Jam in itself was kind of built on top of um, the concept of Nordic Game Jam, which happens in Copenhagen. And a lot of the Finnish indie developers have also started their careers in, in this Game Jam. Or No More Sweden, which is also an old jam. Um, there are different kinds of jams. So these kind of archetypal jams happening in a space like assembly here in a hall, in a, in a school kind of a gym hall or something like that. Um, but it can also happen, for instance, in a train. For, uh, train jam is super exciting, 200 people game jam running from Chicago to San Francisco in 52 hours and people are making games while they are on the train. So that's 
that's a jam with ha which has a li little bit different surrounding. A lot of the game jams are around the 50 hours, uh, similar to ours here, over 50 hours. Uh, but then you can also create uh, games in one hour only, or theoretically in zero hour if you are turning clocks backwards. Um, you can have different topics like Sami game jam. There is also like jams like Christmas game jam. So there's like all sorts of different kinds of jams. And some of the jams also happen in game companies. And most famous of those is Amnesia Fortnite, uh, which is run by Double Fine. You can uh, check more jams at Itch, which is hosting a lot of them these days. Or you can check our curated calendar at finishgamejam.com. So if you think about that, there's so many different kinds of jams, there is absolutely no excuse not to jam. So you just have to find the jam that fits best for you. And everybody can jam. And during this event here, um, this weekend, if you are unsure to kind of enter as a full jammer, you can also be a voice actor for the games that we are creating this weekend. Some of the jams are not necessarily just experimental in a way that you kind of try new things. But we experiment also with the format and location like the train jam or any kind of, kind of creative places. And I've been thinking about this, why it is happening around the globe, because it's not just Finland who is doing that. So I find it personally super fascinating that we can bring game development anywhere. So you can basically do game development um, like, just come up with a place and you can create a game there. Uh, compared to physical production, you don't need anything other than computer if you're making digital games. And our jams are kind of uh, been exploring on that area. The first one that we started with special jam, in, with Finnish game jam, was um, Finnish game jam Bussi in 2014. Uh, we've been doing also game jams with quantum uh, physicists. We've been up north, and also there has been a tandem bike. So yeah, uh, FGJ bus, uh, Bussi, I think that we've spelled it in Finnish. So that took about 22 game developers around the southern Finland during the Global Game Jam, and people were actually developing while the bus was moving. And that was an interesting experiment because um, the constraints that the moving bus creates um, can be, maybe it can feel like a restriction, but it can also afford new directions for your art, for instance. You have to think about what kind of line you can uh, draw when the bus is moving and it's kind of shaky. Or, for instance, um, Jonas Turner participated in one team and he had to kind of accommodate the, the sounds on the background as a, as a sound designer to the game in itself because he was doing the recordings on the, on the kind of uh, breaks on the toilets. <laughs> so yeah, and then in uh, 2016, we went up north about with two, uh, 25 game developers, and we were curious about how much we can uh, do games, like how does it actually change game development when we are completely off the grid. Unfortunately, Finland has such a great network of mobile connections that we were not completely off the grid, but the weather was good for us, so it was quite cloudy, so most of the jammers didn't have any kind of access to internet. And then we did have aggregator uh, power for the laptops, but we realized that the laptops doesn't actually require that much power, so we even limited that to certain hours. So up north, above the Arctic, um, Arctic Circle, within this kind of a very snowy uh, context. We created games together, and people had to uh, kind of queue up for power every now and then. Uh, well, I'm going to show you a small video snippet of the brainstorming that we had to do outside because we didn't have space. So here it comes. Pass, burn, racing. <laughs> and I want to do it. <laughs> uh. 
Hello, my name is Henry Sarasvirto. I work at Moido Games. I code. What I'm planning on doing this weekend is coding. My name is Hanna Hantula. I'm here as a journalist. And my goal for the weekend is to be useful. <laughs> I've heard a couple of uh, energy drinks and pizza jokes uh, during this. Oh no, yeah. Ollaan tekemässä 48 tunnin aikana pelejä. On sanonut, että Global Games on tapahtumaa. Tämä on tällaista suomalaisen hulluuden osoitus, että mennään keskelle metsää, tehdään pelejä. Katsotaan, selvitäänkö viikonlopusta. Teema on Global Game Jamille sellainen niin kuin yhdistävä tekijä, että jos meillä on noin 30-40 000 osallistujaa kaiken kaikkiaan tässä tapahtumassa ympäri maailmaa, tänä vuonna se on rituaali. Ja se teemahan on sellainen, mitä sitten itse voi tulkita monella eri tavoin. So stand there, talk about your, try to sell it to others so that you get the best team as possible interested in your game. Maybe you can also express what would you need, like maybe... Okay, uh, I can code this, this thing, but I need some graphics. Start! So how much time do we have? 20 seconds. 20 seconds, that's nothing. What do you need to do before you go out? Go through a difficult breaker. The game is about customs. Physics-based snow plowing game. Levitating yoga game. Secret handshake. Ass. Burn. <laughs> Racing. Yeah. So yeah, it was super fun to create games in the beautiful scenario of the northern Finland. But we've been also inside experiment with, experimenting with surprising technologies. So we've done a couple of quantum game jams with actual quantum physicists in planetariums. So we did one at Tuorla in an actual kind of a astronomical observation thing. And then one in um, Heureka. So people were creating games to the full dome projector. And uh, not, uh, not everybody was using that technology, but that was super interesting as well. And I'm actually looking forward to planetariums to turn into places that we explore with game making. But yeah, you don't have to have a huge space or a lot of snow around you. You can also take a tandem bike and try to create a game with uh, as green power as possible. So here is, here is Jonne Harja and Samuli Jäskeläinen. Samuli is actually sitting in the audience, so you can talk to him uh, after this about the experiment. He's jamming with us. So um, these guys were crazy enough to took a tandem bike from Stockholm to Malmö. Uh, enter with a lot of hoorays to the game dev um, Nordic Game Conference. And they created a game on a custom-made computer, uh, while the other one was steering and paddling, the other one was coding on the back. So you can actually do that, so that's, that's possible. And um, uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to have a lot of electricity, it can be super green as well. Some of the games that have been created in Game Jams not necessarily have to have so exotic surroundings, unless you think that Kajani is not exotic uh, or is exotic. So Hypermanly Rainbow Chest Hair Shooter was done in 2012 uh, by Samoli and his team. And it's actually now in the, the Finnish Museum of Games. So we are all already in the museum. So this game is played with um, Guitar Hero guitars and a dancing mat. Just Google that, it's super hilarious. Uh, my, one of my personal favorites from the planetarium experiments was Asteroids Redemption. Um, one of the team members was, um, it's actually also jamming us um, this weekend. Uh, so this is like a full dome projected um, asteroid attack game where you know this very black and white old style graphics is taking over the whole screen and it's really really uh, fascinating and it has been to be about quantum physics as well. Done in 2015 at Assembly 
is a very kind of interesting mobile game uh, or phone game, actually. So Luring Luikaus is a simulation of rotary dial telephone game. <laughs> so very, very frustrating, perhaps, and bringing back the memories when us older uh, kids were not able to call into the TV shows uh, with the rotary dial telephone. So Puru is actually sitting on the audience as well, so you can talk about that game. And oh, yeah. And uh, one more is that you can actually experiment with old technology if you were not creating games in the era of PlayStation 1, right? PlayStation 1. So you could try to do that in a game jam, perhaps. Um, so this video, um, I don't think that there is too much talk in it, but you can see the game. So yeah, um, it's it's. I think that Samoli, what is the the platform that you're working this year? What's that? Mega Drive. So yeah, just take a jam and go through all the different consoles that you have never created a game to. So that can be. So you don't always have to experiment with new technology. You can experiment with old technology. You can experiment with technology that don't usually have games on. Or you can experiment in places that game development hasn't been at. Uh, so the game in itself doesn't have to be that experimental. The whole experience of making games can be something more experimental, so it's more of a performance. Um, so yeah, you can experiment in so many different ways with game jams. And uh, you, you might ask why, <laughs> and I can't really give you an explanation other than it is super fulfilling to try to do something new or something that you haven't explored yet and just enjoy the creation. Um, whether you are being experimental in one way or another, are you being brave because you haven't participated to a game jam before or you haven't done something of the game development before or you haven't done games ever, even a table uh, top games before, you can just enter the jam and let the jam take you to that experiment space. So yeah, but also through the kind of lens of the organization that we're running, we just really want to see the different limits of game development from different angles. Uh, so it is about curiosity. So I don't think that I took too long of the time uh, up until now, but I do have the theme announcement also coming up. So this weekend we are creating uh, games, whether they are experimental in one way or another. We are creating them at, at the tables A9 to A10. And you can still join us. You can uh, come to the table and ask how it's done and uh, whether there is teams that are looking for members or if you want to do a solo project. Just come here and come to the thing that some of our jammers has been waiting for. Um, I didn't want to put it in the, the, the beginning of the presentation because it would have been sad to see all the jammers to leave the audience and run for their tables to, to make their games. So I kind of put it at the end, of course. So this year's, um, I think that you might be able to guess it because it relates to the summer that we've been having. Um, so me and the founder of the Assembly Game Jam, Vesa, here on the, in the front, uh, just talked about well, five minutes. This has been the easiest year to come up with the theme. So the theme is going to be on a super small font, but let's see. The theme is, the theme is hot, hot, hot. Thank you, finally. <laughs> so 
As always in Game Jams, you're free to take the theme as whatever you wish for. Um, think about the temperature, maybe trends, maybe that there is three times of this word. There's so many different ways that you can interpret this theme. It's not too hot here in the Mesogesco, so I don't know how inspired you are right now with the theme, but I'm sure if you just step outside and take your sunglasses that were provided in the tables, you are able to get inspired, just utilize the outside of the Mesogescus for this topic. Um, so yeah, if you are not jamming, you're just interested what happens with this theme, this particular theme, just come and check the, the games on Friday night and the Saturday night, and you can be the judge whether they actually imply uh, actually apply the theme or not. So enjoy the party. Uh, you can uh, email me. You can follow me uh, on Twitter. It's not actually there, but you can still follow me on Twitter. It's A-A-K-O-O. -O. And um, yeah, there is a website f uh, where you can check for all the Finnish Game Jam events. And um, that's all. Thank you, everybody, for joining. It's actually quite many people here. So, yeah. I think we have time for questions. Yes, we do. So, any questions, comments? Comments, yes. <laughs> Anyone? Any ideas for the theme? I, I do, actually. I yeah. have more of a comment, um, because I am one of the organizers of the yeah. jams in Finland but also I'm leading the game development company in Turku. Yeah. And I must say that the game jams, not just um, when it comes to this sort of one-time event for a weekend with a bunch of friends or whichever, or total strangers, doesn't matter. But as a game developers, we in our team, we take game jams as something, as, as the practice for the mm. brainstorming. Mm. And this is something that is really helpful, the whole mentality of the jams, mm -hmm. how much is helpful to actually work on the even customer project itself. So from as a developer to developers, please do jam. Yeah. <laughs> so no matter in which stage of development career you are or, or however it is, how, how far you are, but jams yeah. are amazing. Yeah, and uh, I was just thinking today that the, the, the way that I entered the jamming scene was that I was interested in brainstorming. But a lot of my data uh, of the interview is we're kind of explaining that brainstorming doesn't matter too much in game development. But brainstorming through jams matters much more because you have concrete solutions and ideas of uh, the actual product. So that in your mind, you can come up with so many marvelous ideas. And once you start developing them, they are the most stupidest ideas ever in the world. So that's interesting. Absolutely. And uh, when it comes, you already mentioned uh, um, improvisation as the big part. I mean, that's mm. the jam. But I would add to it the adjusting and, mm. and you know, evolution as a team. Because which whoever team members you have at the spot available to work on whichever skill set they mm. have or not have and trying for the first time, you have to adjust to um, that whole idea and everything else you have to what you have and how yeah. to go for it, which actually is everyday life in development pretty mm. much. We have to adjust constantly, timetable, finance, this and the, all sorts of things, not just the ideas. So, so a lot of things is very, very connected to it. Definitely. That's very good observation because when I go to game jams, whether as an organizer or as a jammer, I can see that some of the beginners are more stressed from the kind of the skill palette that you have. Like maybe you want to do something more something, but then your co-worker or co-jammer doesn't actually have skills, so you might get frustrated of that. But the more jams you run, I think that the more interest that uh, the, the super jammers or the experienced jammers take on the constraints that the team also creates. So you have more skills, but also attitude towards that. It's interesting to see what you can create from different kinds of constraints. And it's very important not to be afraid of failing because yeah. I know at least when I'm talking with our students at the University of Turku, it's like they're mostly like, I'm not good enough or, or, this, or what if I fa There is no failing. And this yeah. is something that is really important to explain, especially for the newcomers. Yeah. Like, the, no, it's not a competition. It's not, no one is judging you. Yeah. Just come, experience, have fun, you know, make new friends, if nothing yeah. else. 
the best prize is that you were able to learn something or you just got the epiphany or, you know, you get different kinds of things from jam. So whatever you want to do in a jam, just come and let the jam kind of run you through the event. Yes, well, you and I can definitely, as two researchers, continue this oh, yeah. forever. <laughs> because any, now any questions from the audience? Comments? Everybody is eager to go back to the tables and jam. Shall we let them? Okay, so hot, hot, hot. Thank you. Hot. See ya.